What's going on everyone? Today we will be talking about the stats for the incoming class of 2021 at the Yale School of Medicine. One of the premises of my channel has always been to decrease the amount of asymmetric information that exists within the medical community. Oftentimes some people have access to certain information that other people don't. And the whole point of this channel is to democratize that and make sure everyone has access to the same type of information. And so that's kind of the whole gist behind this video to show you the kinds of statistics that are behind my home institution. I could only hope that other med schools start doing this a little bit more so people know what to expect uh, because otherwise it's kind of unfair because the only way you can get access to this information is through, uh, I think you have to buy like a $20 book that has this stuff. And it's just kind of silly to, to make money off of that. So with that being said, hopefully this tells you a bit more about Yale. And if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box below. I've done this sort of video uh, for the previous years of incoming students, and I'm doing it again this year for the students who just started at Yale who are first years. Um, and without any further ado, let's do it. So here are the statistics just in terms of overall applicants and the overall accepted. So there were 6,236 applicants. Of those, 641 were interviewed. So that's about like 10%. Uh, and of those that were interviewed, 298 were accepted. So a little bit less than 50% of those who were interviewed uh, were accepted, which ultimately leads to, I think, a about 5% acceptance rate, plus or minus. Um, and of the 298 that were accepted, 104 were matriculated. Matriculate basically means they ended up enrolling at Yale. Because remember, individuals can be accepted to multiple medical schools, and they may not decide to always go to the ones that were, they were accepted to. So in this case, um, 298 were accepted, and this is actually amazing. This is actually insane. The 50-50 breakdown between males and females, uh, both in terms of accepted and in terms of total applicants, as well as matriculated, pretty incredible stuff. 29% um, uh, of the class is actually underrepresented in medicine. Uh, and first uh, in their family to attend college, 14 of them were, uh, as well as 10 grew up in rural primary childhood residence, uh, which means, you know, very sparsely populated uh, areas. Um, and again, Yale is very unique in that our class size is, is almost always at around 104. Um, pretty interesting. It's been like that since I've started and it's kind of maintained that. Just notice the breakdown in terms of race and ethnicity here, Asians, Black, African American, Hispanic, Latino, International. Yale is unique in that it does accept international students. Um, so it's always really exciting to get that, um, get that diversity. Um, and this is kind of the breakdown, just demographically. Now let's go a bit more into the um, you know, where these individuals are coming from. There's 19 countries of birth, which means 19 countries of citizenship that were represented outside of the United States. I know that when I started, this was true for me because I was born in India. And so it said India here, and it still says India, which is great. So you can see Canada, China, Denmark, Ethiopia, Jamaica, India, uh, Puerto Rico, all represented here, uh, which means that there are people who were born in those uh, areas who are now ending up at Yale, which is great, as well as individuals who used to be international citizens who became permanent residents, but also notice that there are international citizens who are not permanent residents. So these are truly international folk who, um, as I said, can still get admitted to Yale. Um, Yale is one of the few institutions to allow that. It's actually fascinating. If you have questions on them, drop them below and I'll try to answer them. Undergraduate colleges. So here are some colleges from which two or more students graduated, including Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Emory, Harvard, Hopkins, Northwestern, Princeton, Stanford, UC Berkeley, UCLA, University of Colorado, UConn, UIUC, um, UPenn, USC, Vandy, and Wash U, as well as Yale. So this just shows you that there are certain schools at which you will have more than one individual uh, come in. For example, during my year, we had three UC Berkeley students. I think we had around eight Yaleys. Um, we had maybe four or five from Harvard. So it just goes to show you that we, you do have um, a plurality in terms of the school you go to, the undergrad that you're coming from. Uh, but you will see that there were 40, 56 total colleges represented. 56 total colleges represented among 104 students, which, you know, you think about it, uh, averages out to about two students per school, plus or minus, depending on obviously outliers. Um, so that's kind of all of this. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. This is the part that I know everyone cares a lot about, and that is the grades and all of that jazz. So first and foremost, 
There are 13 first-year students with advanced degrees, which means they may have a master's, an MPH, uh, um, um, uh, MBA, something like that, and they're coming to medical school after that. There's 19 MD-PhD students. That's crazy because what that means is one-fifth of the class is MD-PhD essentially, which means four-fifths of the class is essentially MD only. So what that means is if you're applying MD only, that's literally only 80 slots if you really think about it, right? Because the other 20 are reserved for MD-PhDs. So that's just something that you need to take care of because um, Yale is pretty heavily invested in producing physician scientists, and we tend to have a large proportion of MD-PhD students. Um, and then we had one person who was accepted last year and decided to enroll this year. You see that 23 people came straight out of college. You see that 35 people took a gap year and 46 took more than one gap year. So you can see almost 70 to 80% of the class is taking gap years now. This is becoming more and more common. Uh, when I started medical school, I think it was about 50-50 as far as I remember. But now more and more people are taking gap years and the mean age at enrollment is getting to be a bit higher um, because of that increased gap years. You can see that the cumulative GPA was 3.9, the science GPA was 3.88, uh, as well as a median end cat of 520, which means 50% of the class has above a 520 and 50% of the class has lower than a 520. Um, so I hope this at least shows you some of the insights into the Yale's class. I'm more than happy to start doing this for other institutions. If you guys have information about other institutions, I'm more than happy to break that down. Um, and if you want to hear about certain schools, just drop them below and I'll see if I can get access to those for you guys. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching.